What's going on, fam? What's going on? Ding, 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 round two, like one of y'all just said out down here in the comments. Uh, so here we are, fam. We're going to be talking about colors here. And also, uh, what I also want to do is I want to be able to bring a lot of you on, man. I want to bring some of you on so we could have a conversation and we could go back and forth and, uh, you know, y'all could bring up whatever it is, to, uh, you know, whatever it is that you want to bring up. Um, if you're interested in pretty much uh, coming on, all you got to do is uh, in the comments section or better yet, send me a message. Go to Facebook. My name is Raul Fagundes. I'm going to go ahead and type it up right now. Raul Fagundes. Look for the QBN logo. Click on it, and pretty much we're going to get started. So let's get started now. Before I do, let me know, fam. Are you able to hear me? Am I coming uh, through loud and clear? All right. Finally caught me live. This is uh, Possum. I'm sorry. Posse fam bullies po uh, posy. All right. Well. Uh, you know, where I left this uh, in the previous live, uh, I was trying to explain to you guys uh, pretty much that one of the main reasons why color becomes so complicated to a certain extent is because what people are trying to do is pretty much explain a relationship. OK, now I will also go out here and tell you that I'm not all genetic testing. Let me rewind that. Genetic testing is fine. But the, uh, the genetic results data, I see every now and then I find that it's not 100% on point. And I'll show you what I mean here in a second. But first, I want to show you guys this particular uh, chart. And the reason I want to show you guys uh, this particular chart is because this is a tri-gene chart. Uh, I've been seeing this chart now for years. I refer to it at first religiously, and it makes so much sense. It I get asked all the time, if I have a tri, if I have a non-tri, if I have a tri-carrier and a tri, what do I get? This particular chart from top to bottom is going to explain to you, you know, at the very top, if you got tri on tri, you can only get 100% tri. If you have a tri-carrier and a tri, you're going to get 50% tri, 50% tri-carrier. Remember what I said supposedly get 50%. And if you have tri-carrier, tri-carrier, you're going to get some tries, some non-tries and some tri-carriers and so on and so forth. So if you haven't looked it up, I want you to go to Google and make sure you look up for this chart. It's called the inheritance of the 10 point gene. Uh, make yourself very familiar with that fam. Uh, like I told you guys in my video, a lot of these breeders don't want you to compete with them fam. But, you know, you're in luck, fam, because I'm not afraid of competition, I'm not afraid to share my knowledge with you, uh, because at the end of the day, uh, like I've said all along, this is nothing more than a golf course, at least for me. And the only person I'm competing against is myself. So uh, to further this conversation, I want to bring you to this relationship, which is what I was answering uh, before I, I had to get off. And that is that the K locus and, and and I have it situated here at the very top that K locus um if you have if you look to the left you're gonna see or actually yeah when you look to the left you're gonna see a, a black dog with a K Y uh K B K Y. Now I said whenever you have a K B the relationship kills your tries. This particular graphic shows you the entire relationship. I'm not going to get too far into it, uh, but you're going to be able to see the double E is going to give you either champagne or um, a more watered version, watered down version of a chocolate. Uh, it's not going to let it be as intense. Uh, BB is going to give you brown. If you have BB with a double D, which is the double dilute that I keep talking about, you're going to get a very light colored dog. And then depending if it's, if it's black or brown, depends if you're going to get a light gray or you're going to get that champagne color. On the other side of that, you're going to see if it's KY, KY, then it's going to be able to express anything that the a locus is showing or the A location. And that's where you get your tries and you get all sorts of things going on. So again, if you haven't downloaded it, make sure you uh, download it. It's called Canine Color Genetics Simplified. Uh, it's made by Lab, Lab Gen Vet. 
and definitely want to give them the credit. So make sure you check out this particular chart. It's going to answer a lot of your questions. Now, um, are these charts 100%? Now, before I say that, let me just change my background here because I want you guys to see something. Uh, so we could get, you know, we, we, we can get uh, into it and, and I could try and, and break things down for you uh, to the point that, that we could actually comprehend better. Now, I want you to keep your eye on this, on, on my boy right here, power. OK, now, if you look at power, power is a tri color dog. OK, now we just I just showed you the chart where the if there's a KB, it's going to cancel out your try. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, I have a chart here. I'm going to take you to it and or actually his his genetic chart. So do me a favor. If you haven't done so so far, I want you to be able to follow me at home. I want you to go ahead and pick up your phone. And I want you to go to QBN app. If you haven't downloaded the app, shame on you. You should download it. When you click on, on QBN app, you're, you're going to get this as your main screen. Now, check it out how cool it is, man. I can see all the way through. Now, with that being said, once you get to the main screen, okay, what I need you to do is click in this little uh, thumbs up, and that's DNA health testing. When you click on that, it's going to bring up my dogs and it's going to bring up uh, also pictures of each particular dog. And when you click on them, it's going to take you straight to their genetic test. The reason I want you to do that is because I want you to find power and I want you to click on him. OK, I want you to find power and I want you to download power. Now, look at power. Power is a try. We just got done reading a chart where it says if you're KB. If you have KB anywhere on your K locus, your try is not going to show. OK, so here's where we're going to prove it wrong. This is why I keep telling you guys, you know, I, I get people all the time telling me, well, you know, you, you think you know it all and whatnot. I, it's not that I think I know it all, fam. I've been around long enough to be able to see things and, and I have no problems handing it, handing it down. So pretty much this is his his results. I don't know if I can get it on there for you to see. Anyways, I have it here, so I'll just bring it right up here. Anyways, that's his K locus, okay? In his K location, which determines um, pretty much uh, if you're going to have a brindle, uh, a, a brindle color or a black color, he's got a KB, okay? You see that? You see where it says, you see right here where it says KB, KY? That B, that KB, should cancel out my try. Now, I'm, I'm going to bring him back up again. There he is. There he is. Can somebody tell me if he's a try? Can somebody tell me if he's a try? What's up, Ray Washington? I just seen you. Rhodes Kennels, Ivan Garcia. And there's somebody else out here with a name I can't even pronounce on the air. But either way, I just want you to see. Uh, that you are going to find some exceptions to genetics, fam. That's all it is. And that not everyone knows everything, not even Embark testing does. Now, with that being said, let me go ahead and take him off my screen here. And uh, what I want you guys to do is if you guys got questions, I want to find a way to bring you on. So this is what we're going to do, fam. If you're interested in coming on, what I need you to do is Simply go to Facebook right now, find my account. Matter of fact, let me bring it on up. And I want you to go ahead and send me a message. Okay, just send me a message uh, saying, bring me on. Um, getting messages as we speak. I want to give everybody a fair shake. Tell me, bring me on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn right back around and I'm going to send you a link. You're going to click on that link and we're going to bring you on and we're going to talk some bully. All right. So all I need for you to do is, like I just said, uh, go ahead and find my account. Let me bring my account on so you can see us. Let me go to my main account here. And all you got to do is, like I just said, go right ahead and send me a message. Once you send me a message, um, let me see, enter screen. And yeah. 
Let's see here, application window. There you go. So let me share that so you can see it. And okay, never mind. It's not for some reason. It's just not coming up. But either way, all you got to do is type in Raúl Fagundes, and yeah, it's not gonna let me bring it up. Jesus. All right, all you got to do is type Raúl Fagundes, find my logo, and once you find my logo, fam, uh, there we go. There we go. Just just got it. All right, so let me bring it. There you go. So that's that's pretty much my page. And once you see that logo right there, QBN, just go ahead. Um, that's me. Send me a message. I have no problems bringing you on so we could talk some bully, uh, you know, whatever it is that you guys want to ask. Uh, you know, this particular week, um, you know, here you go. I'm showing you a little bit of my page and whatnot. Uh, yeah, just letting people know that I'm live now. Anyways, uh, all you got to do is go ahead and send me a message. I'm going to bring you right on. So with that being said, man, let's let's get into some subjects here, man. Let's let's just talk, man. Let's talk bullies. It's Saturday night, some Sunday night, some places still Saturday night here. Um, and let me see. Are American bullies considered to be brachial cephalic? This is coming from Casper, man. Casper. Appreciate your support, man. I'm going to tell you right now, fam, um, brachial cephalic, for those of you that don't know, is pretty much saying that the nose is pretty much close to to the head or the cranium, better yet, in, in, in the case of, of our dogs. I could tell you American bullies typically, uh, let me not say that because the minute I say that, it's going to fall on my head. All I'm going to say is this. If you breed to certain particular breeds, and we know that American Bully Excel has from American Bulldog to straight up uh, Old English Bulldog uh, to all these breeds that are brachiocephalic, and therefore, if you have too much of that concentrated on one particular dog or bloodline, excuse me, you will be getting that. As you well know, being brachiocephalic goes along with having a shorter lifespan because you're going to have the dog pretty much snorting and having trouble breathing, uh, especially when he goes to sleep, it's going to snore. And when that happens, it changes the pressures in the heart. Therefore, your ventricles are either going to expand. Uh, that's that's called uh, cardiomyopathy. And big explanation short, it ends up uh, taking your dog's life early. So to better answer your question, the majority of American Bully Excels that I've seen, I can tell you the ones in my yard are not brachycephalic. You could take a look and, and, and just look at my pictures, you'll see. Uh, and that's basically designed on purpose on my behalf because I like to train my dogs. I like my dogs to go up the A-frame. I like my dogs to go up and down the goat ramp. Uh, it gets real hot here in Texas. I mean, there's been times I got 107 degrees. I have a cooling misting system. I have fans and whatnot. But even then, it's really hot. So could you imagine if I was trying to exercise one of my dogs and they were brachiocephalic, they would pretty much uh, die die out on me. So that's, that's the main reason why I try to steer clear, uh, clear from brachiocephalic. I prefer a little bit of a longer snout. I need to shorten up maybe, maybe a half inch on it. Uh, for my satisfaction, that is. Uh, what do I think of the current state of the ABKC? Ah, oh, man, look, I'm not going to answer that, bro, honestly, and I'm going to tell you why. I'm not on the ABKC seeing every single reg regulation that they change up every six months or the UKC. I'm, I'm like really concentrated on my kennel, bro. Every now and then when some, you know, when, when they come down with something that is big, I hear it through you guys, through social media, then I'll look it up or I'll talk to Daryl, talk to Danny, that sort of thing. But honestly, man, um, I'm, I'm not really up to it. I'm not even going to sit here in, in front. Uh, if I'm not up to it, I'm not afraid to say that I'm not. So that's what it is. Casper, you're more than welcome, brother. That's what you get for following us, for sharing us, man. Uh, let me see. Somebody didn't get their notification. I'm sorry to hear that, brother. Um, either way, 
Uh, hey, you know what? Hey, if you haven't hit, uh, where's it at? It's over here. If you haven't hit the subscribe button, make sure you do. Uh, if you haven't hit the share, go ahead. You do, you know, it's up to you if you want to share it or not. So, um, what is the correct way to approach a breeder when you're trying to improve your yard? So what do you mean by improving your yard? Let me give you, let me give you guys a couple of examples. Why it is that, that breeders are weary of, of new breeders coming around or, or wanting in for one not. Okay, so, you know, in a perfect world, none of you would be interested in money and you wouldn't be interested in, in just breeding for money or for color, right? Right, because you guys, everybody out here, you're only here exclusively because you want to improve the breed. And, you know, if you break even, you're happy and satisfied. Um, we all know that that's not necessarily true, but let's go ahead and say that just for a minute, right? So, what ends up happening is breeders are not stupid, okay? Breeders have been in this game far too long. The minute you text me, I already know what your intentions are. Typically, by the first couple of, of, of texts that you send me, I, I pretty much have an idea if you're brand new, if you're just shopping around, um, if you're a serious buyer. I immediately know that. And I treat each person accordingly, and so do breeders. We know that a lot of these new breeders that are coming in, the great majority of them, are coming in because they figure in the head for a minute, well, I just bought this $5,000 dog from QB and Kennels. If I buy, the, buy another $5,000 dog and I breed them, I can sell $5,000 puppies. And if I have 10 puppies in a litter, I made 50 grand off of a $10,000 investment. We know this, man. We know that this is the main reason why you're coming in. And even though I've sat here till I've, I've been blue in the face trying to tell you that that's not how it works, irregardless, you guys are going to go off the of first impressions and you're going to go do that. Uh, you might, you know, what I do notice is that the majority of the people that follow me at QBN are the people that have already stepped in something and are trying to figure out how to clean their feet and how to step in the right direction. Uh, typically, newer people, they, they kind of gravitate uh, to other YouTube channels that maybe offer them something that's a little bit more, uh, I don't know, more in tune with what's going on in, in, the, um, in the social media platforms and the bully game. As far as me, I'm, I'm a little bit more educational and whatnot, and, and I do notice that people gravitate towards me afterwards. But to better answer your question, how do you approach a breeder? Let me tell you how you approach me. You want to grab my attention? You want me to actually figure it out? You come with me with information. Show me that you've educated yourself. Talk to me about something. Let me give you an example. Recently, I had somebody that tried getting into my circle. To a certain extent, this person probably did. And this person got a dog from me. This person bred the dog. This person is all about business. Pretty much told me that to my face. Any breeder in this that hears somebody tell them that I'm only here for the business of this, you immediately know that this person is a backyard breeder. Case in point, he's not interested in learning. He's not interested in improving the breed. The only thing he wants to learn is how I can produce this pup so I can make more money off of it. You see what I'm saying? And as a breeder and in representing my brand, I need to protect my brand. You see, wh wherever you say QB and Kennel, whether you like it or not, you're saying Raul Fagundes. And this is why I try to protect my brand. See, this cat is going to turn around and breed this, this female to just about every and anything. He's got no loyalty to the brand or me. OK, so this is why we're weary of it. I made a very big mistake with this person. I should have pretty much quizzed the hell out of him before he he stepped in. He showed me a couple of things, but he really didn't. He didn't press himself to really want to learn, at least not the breeding side. Definitely wanted to learn the, the business side. He, he, he's all on that, you see. But that's, that's where you define what a backyard breeder is and what a true breeder is. And at the end of the day, I want nothing but true breeders around my circle that are going to represent my brand. 
at the end of the day, people that want to be backyard breeders, uh, when they approach a true breeder, uh, we're going to kind of try and prod and test you and kind of figure out what, what your intentions are. Um, because we understand one thing, fam. We, under, we, we very well understand that we have a cookie jar full of cookies. And every new breeder out there and everybody that figures that they got an angle and they think they're smarter than the average cat, they want to stick the dirty hands in that cookie jar, fam. These are facts. And so this is why breeders kind of present these psychological hurdles or pretty much some of them don't even want to deal with anybody that's outside of the circle. And I truly cannot blame them because, you see, if if you think about a diamond ring, I've seen diamond rings go for about four or five thousand dollars. Right. So. You know, who's to say if these pups are going for four or five thousand dollars, they're pretty much in these people's minds equivalent to a diamond ring. Do you think this person's going to hold any loyalty to the store he's buying it from or where he's getting it or any of this? Not at all, man. You know, the, these people, they're just coming in. They're they're trying to bank with your hard work and then turn around and tell the world, hey, look at the genetics of my female. The funniest thing is, if you were to ask this particular cat I'm referring to, um, you know, what he was thinking when she was bred, better yet, something even more simple. What are the bloodlines behind her? You know, this dude would probably have to go running to somebody to try and get some information because he doesn't know, you know, his left foot from his right foot when it comes to breeding. And it's rather unfortunate. And this is why breeders like myself, we try to uh, you know, kind of have a hurdle. And also immediately when we see these signs, we immediately push that to the side because long-term wise, do you think he's here to improve my brand, to improve our breed, to improve our dogs? Oh man, he's just another little vampire, another little parasite. And so I just want to get that across, fam. This is why breeders don't allow every, just anybody to come into the circle because we know we got the cookies, we got the goods. And you want to stick your hands in there. You want first pick. I just met you yesterday, but you want first pick from my litter, you know, or even more bold. You want to offer me three thousand dollars more than anybody else to get your hands on my first pick. It doesn't work that way, fam. It really doesn't. When you produce a litter that's worth thirty five, forty, fifty thousand dollars, three thousand dollars ain't. Shh. OK, so understand that. And that's the reason why 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 you must approach a breeder. Like myself, for example, you got to show me, hey, hey, Raul, look here, bro. I seen that uh, on the K locus, you know, KB, I see, you know, KB and KY in my dog's genetics. However, my dog is showing up as try. And I seen that you explained that in this, such, that, and this, that, and the other video. You catch my attention, fam. You catch my attention. Uh, when you're just, you know trying to rattle me for prices and you want me to show you all these pictures and you want me to do this and do that. I don't have the time. I don't have the time, honestly, fam, honestly. And, you know, breeders pick up on that. Breeders that, that, that and I don't even consider, I don't consider QVNK to be a, I don't consider myself to be a large breeder. Uh, I'm definitely bigger than your average breeder, but I'm not necessarily, I don't necessarily have 40, 50, 60 dogs. Um, but I got enough dogs where you better be very efficient with your time. Uh, and so, you know, we start learning ways of how to deal with people and how to figure them out real, real quick. And if you ain't here to improve my brand or improve my breed or with the right intentions, you, you just need to get out. And, the, you know, that's that's what you're going to get, fam. Let me see. Sounds. Let's see. <laughs> Somebody says something here. I got to see. Sounds like someone needs to be rolled on what's good, Raul. Bro, uh, all I can say is, like I said, man, everybody wants to stick their hands in the cookie jar. Some people are more bold than others. Some people know how to hide their intentions better than others. But eventually, I'm going to figure it out. And if you're a non-breeder and you, you did get a cookie, that's all you got, bro. Uh, obviously, my bloodline, along with everybody else's yard, is evolving. We're not staying in the same place. So what you got here now in a matter of a year, it's going to lose its value uh, because you need to know how to evolve how I'm evolving. And if you think that mirroring my moves 
is going to be able to solve that problem. You got to realize if you got one female in your yard, you're up against all the females I got in mind. Genetics is about probabilities. So pretty much it's like playing baseball. You get one strike, you're out. I get 11 strikes before I'm out. Let's see who's going to win. This is why you cannot mirror a bigger a, a bigger kennel. If you mirror a bigger kennel, their moves are definitely unquantifiable in comparison to yours if you have one female or two females. Just wanted to get that point across. Let's see here. Oh, what do you think of Dax mixed messages, man? Uh, I want to steer. I want to steer clear from that. I want to get more into more into inbreeding, more into colors. Uh, Dustin Murray, uh, can you inbreed father to daughter, then take a male pup and breed to grandma? All right, bro. Here we go, man. Inbreeding, inbreeding, inbreeding. All right. So look, let me tell you what I think about inbreeding. So here's the deal. And I think I explained it in my last video. Inbreeding, what ends up happening is in the genes, you're going to have a pair from the mom and a pair from the dad, right? So when both when when both when both genes are the same inside of the allele, okay? Basically, this is called homozygous. Homozygous, okay? And when they're different, this is called heterozygous. Okay. So basically, and I'm going to try to simplify this. When you inbreed, you're making more of these. Okay. You're making more of these and you're making less of these. Okay. So that's all great when you want the dogs to be big headed, right? Big headed like the dad and the daughter, and and you know you, you want them to have a strong rear like like they both do, and you might get lucky enough when you do that to quantify that big head exponentially and quantify that rear exponentially. Here's the problem, fam. If that dog is east west, you're gonna multiply that. If that dog is high rear, you're gonna multiply it again. If that dog has an underbite, overbite, that dog has a kink tail, that is the problem behind inbreeding. I'm going to try to answer your question. So your question is, you know, can you inbreed father to daughter? Sure, you can. Anybody can. Um, I would recommend against it unless you know exactly what you're doing. Okay? And even when you know what you're doing, I could tell you already you're really kind of tiptoeing around to see what's going to come out of it. All right. So then take a male pup and breed it to the grandma. Sure you can. But my whole point is, why are you taking it back and breeding it to the grandma if you're originally trying to duplicate the grandpa? You see, you're taking the daughter to the father. You now have a male pup. In essence, if you're breeding that way and you're inbreeding that way, it's because these are the traits you're trying to you're trying to lock in. Why are you coming back to grandma? Grandpa's the line that you're inbreeding to. So again, I, I don't understand. I guess I need more information to be able to answer that question, fam. Because honestly, um, honestly, I, I I I don't comprehend. Uh, let me see, man. Let's see. Hello, Raul. Excited to see learn tonight. Sound loud and clear in Alabama. All right. Alabama's in the house. Anita Bell, thank you so much. We have uh, Beth B in the house. It's already Sunday over there in Canada. Uh, I have Daryl Bridges. I'm going to get my bully pup ears crop at ear trim on Thursday. All right, buddy. I might just see you there, man. Um, my two females, I got to get their ears cropped. I might show up there on Thursday, bro. Might just uh, bump into you. Uh, let's see here, man. Let's see else. What else we got, brother? What is it that stands out from Razor's Edge blood versus Gotti Line blood? Oh, yes, yes. Good question, man. Good question. Let me see if I could bring up. Let me see if I could bring up. Uh, let's see here, man. If I could bring up some pictures so I could show you. All right, I can't. So I'm just gonna tell you straight up. Listen. For me personally, uh, I feel that Razor's Edge 
is more uh, compact. Okay, I feel that their long bones are slightly shorter and that makes them slightly thicker. Again, man, there is no right or wrong answer. Um, you know, do you prefer a power running back for your football team or you prefer an elusive running back for your football team? Well, it depends what kind of off offense you're running. So essentially, what kind of yard do you have and, and how can these pieces fit in? Essentially, that's what it comes down to. I always I always compare my yard to a football team. Uh, my new pups are my draft picks. Uh, some of them are going to make it. Some of them are not. Uh, not because you're a first pick. You know, do you pretty much make it on my yard? You pretty much got to grade out and you got to bump somebody out to be able to stay here. And uh, I think I spoke about dynamic kennel here recently, and I could tell you um, it, it's really working for me. And it's my best recommendation for you. We have QB and K's watchtower. This is my boy, Robert James Ward, QB and Clay, the QB and K, the cleaning crew. You know it. Uh, clean and correct, man. That's that's what we're about. Uh, Jonathan Nor Noriega says, protect your brand. I'm going to tell you guys something. Let me give you a little bit on the business side of it, okay? Because I'm always talking about the breeding side of it. I got a lot of you writing to me and telling me, hey, bro, why don't you talk a little bit about you know the business side? So let me talk to you about the business side of it, man. The way that the business side of this works is typically, uh, the way it works is typically when you start out, you're either going to be in a click or you're not. Okay. You're either going to be in a click or you're not. Uh, not necessarily because automatically you're in a click, things are going to go well for you. Um, but I will say that when you are in a click, uh, at least when you post something, you're going to get more likes, you're going to get more shares, you're going to get people commenting. This usually generates more interest and whatnot. Now, you could do it that way, or you could originate from straight up grassroots, man. It's just you against the world. You're constantly posting. You're trying to show your dogs in a better light and, and pretty much start from there. What's going to end up happening is it's going to take about two or three years. It's going to take you about two or three years, uh, first of all, for you to start producing those first couple of litters, for people to start seeing what you're producing, for people to see the angle that you're coming in. Uh, for example, my angle has always been education, has always been genetics. That's just my thing. I enjoy it. I enjoy breeding. I enjoy working my dogs out and whatnot. But genetics seems to be the one trait that I really like to hone in on. Uh, not that I know it all. I don't know it all. But it's just the one thing that I really like. And so people are going to start kind of seeing that. What ends up happening is these people end up buying dogs or whatnot. And then one day they remember, hey, that crazy nut over there at QBNK, he knows a little something about genetics. Let me go you know, check out his videos or whatever. Then they click. They go in there. They like it. They either subscribe, share. I know you guys are sharing. So they share. And, and pretty much that's how that goes. And then people start giving me credibility because the information that I'm putting out, they either cross check it in Google or they, they actually do it and they see the results and so on and so forth. And then whether you like it or not, uh, fam, you start building a brand. Okay. The, the brand, the, the brand, my brand, for example, QB and K um, it is a brand that ev re revolves around certain things. Uh, one of our main hashtags is quality is priceless, clean and correct. That th These are hashtags that I mainly use. Now, you're going to find some people out there that are definitely going to try to piggyback on my success. This, I guess this is human nature across the board. And to be honest with you, it's actually quite flattering to a certain extent. Um, but with that being said, once you start establishing yourself, you're going to start seeing people trying to piggyback off of you. This is when you know you have arrived. OK, this is when you know nobody's going to come over and say, hey, you know what, bro, you got here. No, the way you're going to know is out of nowhere, out of the blue, you're going to start getting people that are going to be either hating on you or trying to stick their hands in the cookie jar or trying to imitate you because. Really, they got nothing else to, to really throw out there. This is when you know you're starting to stand out away from the crowd, okay? After you've had that first litter, that second litter, and those pups are now a year old, I hope that you've given your female a break. But either way, I don't even want to get into that subject right now. Um, 
then you're able to kind of point the finger and say, hey, you see that puppy there? Produced by this female and this male. Now, when you start producing, obviously, you're going to be able to charge a little bit more. OK, um, because now you've been able to establish yourself. You also have gotten yourself uh, a following. I've always told people, uh, find yourself um, if you can try to post on all platforms. But what I found that works for me is I've been able to find this particular platform, uh, which is YouTube. I feel it's the platform where I could be the realist. I could come through and say, you know, what it is that I want to say and not be restricted. Today, I just got restricted by Facebook because I literally posted this live and started sharing it. And boom, you're restricted. Um, also, uh, about a year ago when I was posting, a couple haters get together. They report my account and I couldn't post. So um, all I can tell you is find the social media channel that you could best um Express yourself in, try to master that, and then move on to something else. Let me see. How do you go about vetting prospective buyers of your pup? Okay. So the very first step, which is very simple, is go into their Facebook account. I go into their Facebook account. Uh, if I can, and I'm able to, sometimes they have the same names, I'll go into the Instagram account. Now, you got to realize each platform gives you something different. Facebook, to me, if you were to talk to if I was to talk to you in in kind of social media terms, to me, Facebook is like the hood. OK, and no offense to anybody on Facebook. I'm there myself. But I'm just saying in the in the in the social media platforms, I feel like Facebook is the hood. Everybody's got Facebook. Everybody's there. Uh, typically, that's where, 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 where you're going to get most of your haters and people that just simply want to complicate you whenever they see you progressing. For whatever reason, that's how I've seen it. Uh, that's why I try not to comment too much in groups. Every now and then I'll stick my head out and I will support, uh, but I try not to too much. Um, then you have like Instagram, which in my opinion, uh, you know, it's kind of like, it's kind of like that, uh, man, I don't want to throw anybody down on Instagram, but I got to say what it is. Uh, Instagram is kind of like the make-believe world the perfect picture with the high resolution and the sun hitting it just right in order for you to be successful there. Uh, if you have lower resolution, you know, you know, you, you could be as truthful as you want. It, it just seems like you don't perform well there. At least I don't. And then you got this particular platform, YouTube, where I feel um, you're not behind a picture. Uh, I'm going to tell you that you guys this right now in the bully game, a picture is worth a thousand lies. OK, that if you see a dog behind a picture. He looks amazing. And you like that dog. Find a video of that dog, because the video is really going to tell you what the picture is not telling you. Remember that. And the same goes true with the breeder and everything else. Uh, when you put them behind a camera here and you, and you, you got to answer live questions and you got to put everything together and whatnot is your, your true intentions are going to come through eventually. So how do I vet? New prospective buyer, buyers, I look at their Facebook account. I look at their Instagram. If I see a dog in a chain, game over. See dog in dirt. I see a lot of dog dirt pictures, game over. I see a dirty ass house, game over. I'm, I'm not going to put a pup of mine in that situation. Um, you know, if, if I see a picture of a child, you know, jumping, kicking, anything like that on another dog that's already there, I'm not going to put my puppy there. Uh, and I recommend you don't either. So pretty much, uh, it's rather basic. Um, also if, if, uh, if for example, they're telling me they're coming from, for example, I'm coming from New York, New York, the, the city in New York. Hey, before you even come here, before you buy, can I see a leasing agreement that allows my breed in your building? Um, you know, just things like that, fam. Uh, use your common sense. See what's going on. Um, that That's pretty much it, man. Uh, I, I don't I don't have. um I don't have a particular system down. I just use common sense. I try to see uh, what angle the person's coming from. And, and I figure it out from there. Uh, I am a true believer as well that the price will vet a lot of the bad. Um, it's just common sense. Uh, you know, somebody is living in a rickety house, nine times out of 10, doesn't have the 5,000, 
you know, or whatever you're going to charge for, for a dog, you know, the, the higher the price, the more vetting it's going to do. So that's the best I could say about that. Uh, it's not a 100% proof system, uh, but I will say that all in all, it's it's been working out well. Uh, let me see what we got over here. Hey, been watching you for a while now. Do you have standard or just Excel? No, I have standard. Uh, matter of fact, my boy Fireball, he's a standard. Uh, actually, I take it back. He's not even a standard. He's a classic. He's a classic. He started my line uh, with my girl, Azu, which is an XXL. And I know XXL doesn't exist, but I refer to it to show that she's bigger than XL. So, yes, uh, I, I do have a boy that's a, that's a classic. I will tell you, all of my females, except for one, are XL. So, when I put that classic into my XLs and XXLs, that's what he's been producing. So let's see here. So we have TV kennels. Is it good to start your kennel with a classic bully? Well, I just coincidentally, I just explained. I started with a classic and fireball, and I started with my female, Azu, who's an XXL. Uh, I don't see anything wrong with that. Um, I usually try not to go too many classes up. In other words, I wouldn't go pocket to XXL because then you're going to have, you're going to have underbite and overbite issues. You might have a high rear because the, the pup might go ahead and, and inherit the front legs of, of the dad who's a pocket and the rear of the mom who's an XXL. And now you got a walking train wreck. So I try to keep it maybe standard to XL or classic to XL. I know I'm, I'm going against what I'm saying by the fact that I went through classic to an XXL, but knowing this, that's why I recommend it going forward. Uh, let's see here. What do you do with pups that don't turn out as expected in adulthood? Adulthood. All right. So this is, this is, it, this is not a perfect science being a breeder fam as much as I want it to be. And, and maybe at times I've even been told that I make it look easy. Sometimes it really isn't. It really is not. Let me give you an example. You know, uh, I could keep a pup and at three months, everything is spot on everything. I'm looking at, at a perfect front, perfect top line, perfect rear. Now I've said in pre in my previous videos, and if you guys haven't seen them, check them out where I'm rating pups and whatnot. I've said that if regardless if it's me or whoever it is, there's a 20 to 25% that you're looking at a 10 month, uh, I'm sorry, at a 10 week old pup that you just cannot predict. It could go North. It could go South. You cannot predict it. I could tell you the majority of the time, East West is going to present itself between four and six months. This is one of the reasons why I tell you to keep your puppies light, okay? Because if it's genetic East West, I'm going to tell you right now, if it's genetic, I don't care what you do. You may slow it down 5%. That's about it. It's going to show, okay? But if it's dietary, you're the one that's causing it because you're not keeping your pup light. So between uh, months four and six, your pup should be light. He should not, you know, you shouldn't be seeing a pup that 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 is struggling to get up or or, or too heavy when it's walking around, because uh, eventually what's going to happen is you're going to be causing east west. So let's say east west is caused or is inherited either way, and I'm looking at a pup that's, I don't know, 12, 13, 14 months old. Pup is popping, and I'm not seeing east-west adjusting, not even not even 5%, okay? At that point, um, I have to grade the pup. So if I have just one major flaw in my yard, I consider that to be breed quality still. However, if he has that inherited east-west, for example, or, or, or nutritional east-west, and it's already there, you're not going to fix it now at 13 or 14 months. And he also has a high rear. Now you have two uh, major faults. And in that point, I categorize you as pet quality. Therefore, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paste up uh, into my app. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put them in QBN app over here and show you. I'm going to go ahead and put them in on QBN app. 
and I'm going to go ahead and send a notification, and the no notification is going to say that there's a, a pet quality pup available. Uh, there is a video that we put out here about, uh, I don't think it's been a year, uh, where I'm talking about um, a female that I kept. She was my first pick female out of a particular litter. And at six months, uh, she was showing me an underbite. Now, I've never had an underbite in my yard. Uh, I've had some people tell me, well, why didn't you wait you know, for her to be a year old and whatnot? Um, I wasn't going to wait for a year old with that particular flaw. Uh, not only that, she had other flaws as well. She was east-west. She, she was showing me a couple of things. So I went ahead and made her pet quality. Uh, we moved, you know, we, we pretty much made sure she was going to a good home and, and we moved on from her. Uh, so essentially that's what I do. Uh, also depending the fault. So if I have a dog, say for example, it was a nutritional east west and I know about it. So it wasn't caused by his genes. It was caused by me letting him be overweight and he got that. Um, yeah, that's still a breed quality pup, fam. Uh, this is why you need to know what's causing what so you can make, excuse me, so you can make an assertive decision. So that's the best way I can answer that. Is lazy eye a flaw? Yes, it is. But how old is your pup? You see, you got to realize that the head is the last thing that grows on your puppy. So uh, if you notice, um, you know, when your puppy's growing, that the head is, if, if you could shield your, your eyes like this, you're going to see a shape, okay, kind of like the beginning of, of, of an oval, if you will. And as that head grows, it widens. So what may seem like a lazy eye may just be that the cranium has not, has not popped yet. It hasn't grown to its fullest yet. Now, if it's grown to its fullest or if it's a young pup and it's a ridiculous, ridiculously exaggerated flaw, then that's a whole different story. So, but if you're, if you're seeing a little bit of, an, of a lazy eye, I would say give it some time to see, you know, for that, that cranium to pop. It just may be the positioning of the eyes where the cranium is now. Um, how many times a day should I be feeding that pup? Uh, well, uh, you know, you, 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 I've said it before. We feed twice a day. Uh, you could feed twice. You could feed three times. I mean, it's really up to you, fam. It's what works for you and your lifestyle. Um, I would not be feeding it just one time, one time a day. Um, but, you know, that's that's pretty much, uh, you know, your call, how, how, how you want to run it. So we have Rick Star El, El Rosquero. What's up, bro? Thank you for following, man, and giving us shares. QBN ain't no half-stepping, no games, no gimmicks. The way you show your dogs, man, with the video is too solid for any Photoshop photo. These uh, wannabes, I guess, post. Yes, I totally agree. Uh, since day one, I made sure that we were going to show our dogs on video. Flaws and all, because my dogs are not 100% perfect, fam. They're not. I'm not afraid to say it. You see, a lot of these these uh, backyard breeders that come into this uh, to run this as a business, they'll never tell you that there's a flaw, okay? Uh, because they've never really taken the time to to want to evolve as a breeder. They're just there uh, to run a business. Uh, I, I've said it from day one. This is a game of Tetris, man. There's a game of Tetris. You have a female with slight high rear. Everything else is perfect. You have a male that's got slight east-west, but no high rear, and everything else is perfect. Hey, there may be two pieces you want to put together. You know, you're not going to get a perfectly enti an entire perfect uh, litter. But you're going to get two or three pups that are, that are, that are going to be near that, and that's how you improve. Uh, you got to realize you got to get imperfect parts to try to make the most perfect of a pup that you're going to make. And there is no perfect pup. So I hope I've been able to answer that, man. Uh, all right, man. We got uh, Jarrell Medell. Hey, Raul, major love from Trinidad and Tobago. Hey, man. Shout out to Trinidad and Tobago. My people down in Venezuela as well. Uh, let me see what we got here. Uh, do you have any recommendations? Do you have any recommendation, recommendations for Cogn I guess, co yeah, cognitive training and how do you know you have a champion dog and what is the earliest age that you can tell? Wow, 
That's a loaded question. All right. First of all, I'm not a trainer. I'm not even going to try to fake the funk. I'm not a trainer. I'm a breeder. My dogs are trained my way to, you know, uh, follow my commands and whatnot. Um, but I am not a trainer. Uh, this is why in my videos you're going to see I don't necessarily give training advice uh, because I just don't know enough about that to be able to sit here and give you uh, recommendations on that. Um, how do you know you have a champion dog? Hmm. Look, let me tell you something. I've been asked before, hey, do you show dogs? And the fact is, I don't. I don't have the time, fam. I'm too involved and wrapped up in, in my breeding program out here talking to you guys and doing videos and whatnot. Also, I, I have been to about two or three shows. Um, I don't like the back dealings that that, that, that that I saw going on to the shows that I went to. Are they all like that? I'm sure they're not. But the ones I went to were. So with that being said, it was a major turnoff to me. So to answer your question, how do you know you have a champion dog? I guess, you know, what people don't understand is that there's not a um, there's not a, a measuring stick as to whether you have a champion dog or not. This is what I mean by it. You know, if you're in the middle of nowhere, say in Iowa, and you're going to a dog show over there, uh, and there's, I don't know, when you go show your dog, there's like, I don't know, one or just another dog. You know, and you're able to win every time you go because in your area, you're just the top dog, uh, you know, out here in Houston or, you know, in, you know, in, in previous years, I have seen um, dogs, you know, get get a champion trophy or, or be certified as champion. And I just look at them and, and I have to look in the other direction. I don't know if somebody got paid off or somebody owed something. Uh, I don't know if maybe the judge, you know, has a lazy eye. I don't know. Um, but all I can tell you is location of where you're at and how much competition is in your area is going to affect uh, also as far as how many of these back dealings are going on. So uh, that's my best shot at that. Um, what is the earliest age you could tell? Um, look, here's the deal, fam. This is why I tell you guys, if you haven't done so, download my grading system, go to my videos. You're going to see there's a video that says the best, um, it, it said the best material that I can offer you. Um, and that grading system in particular for me, uh, I grade my months, my dogs every single month. I look at it at three months. I look at it mostly at six months, at eight months, at 10 months, at 12 months, at 14 months. And there's a reason why I look at it at each one of these intervals. At three months, that pup is showing you at 10 weeks, at 10 to 12 weeks, that pup is showing you what he, he or she can potentially be when they grow. Okay. At six months, I'm really looking at, at, uh, your front to see if you're east west because usually between months four and six that's when you're going to show it okay um at around eight months i should start seeing an improvement in your puppy if you were a puppy and you were cow hawked you should start showing me some serious improvement uh, i should have already seen improvement between month six and months eight um at month 10 you're okay so month eight you're at uh, month six you're going through your first spurt between six and eight your second spurt should start at around 10 months uh again this is not a perfect science at around roughly 12 to 14 months uh i you're already set as far as how tall you're going to be now the next step of growth is how wide you're going to be and that's what we call uh the dog popping okay and so anywhere between 14 to 16 months, I'm really going to be looking at you. So say, for example, you have a dog that's east-west, slight east-west at 12 months. I wouldn't even sweat it too much because at 12 months, they haven't popped. So I'm going to be really looking at that front at month 16 through 18 while you're filling in and that chest and shoulders filling in. And I'm looking for those paws to open up. I'm sorry. I'm looking for those paws to come in. Um, that That's pretty much how I play it. So your answer is, you know, exactly when does this happen? I can't give you an exactly. 
Because if, if you're dealing with a puppy that is not east-west, does not have a high rear, does not have an overbite, underbite, doesn't have a kink tail, the hawk is perpendicular at 90 degrees when you stack it and you see the rear angulation perfectly where it's supposed to be, then, you know, I might be able to call it uh, at around 12 months. I feel a lot more confident. I would say at that point, uh, you know, maybe there's a 10% that could go north, north or south at that point. Uh, but the safest bet is as close to two years old as possible. By then, I could tell you by 16 months, their bone, bone plates have sealed. And so you're not running so much of a risk of, of things deforming as much past the 16 months. That's the best way I can answer that for you. Uh, let me see, uh, Dubois, Dubois saying the answer was perfect. I'm sorry, Dubois, I don't remember the question I answered, but all right, man. Uh, we got over here. I have two fawn and white chested stud and and female dog. Uh, they made it. Is this a bad thing? Because of same exact colors. Thanks uh, for what you're doing. No, it's not a bad thing if you're breeding two dogs for the same color. I, I've done it in the past. Uh, when it becomes a bad thing is when the bloods are the same. When you have a brother and a sister, that's you really don't want to do that, fam. And, you know, earlier we had somebody asking about inbreeding, you know, uh, father to daughter or, or son to mother, that sort of thing. That brings us back to having two of the same instead of having one that could save you if this one is not good. OK, so say, for example, you have a dog that has a super long snout. Everything else is perfect and you inbreed it. Now that snout is going to go from here to here. It's going to go that long. Whereas if you had a shorter snout, you could you might just bring it in a little bit. So I hope I, I explained it a little bit better as far as uh, the inbreeding. But definitely color, just color alone, it's not it's not going to affect it in any way. All right. We got QB and K's watchtower. All right, so they have food puzzles to build your dog's cognitive ability by making them seek, hide their toy, play hide and seek, and make think. Now, let me explain something to you guys so you can understand, fam. Uh, and 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 Robert, thank you for answering that. Robert, by the way, is QBNK's watchtower. Um, this is why he he is one of my strongest affiliates, and that is because. He brings to the table something that I don't have. I told you guys, I am not a trainer. Um, I'm too wrapped up in breeding and in genetics and in bringing videos to you guys to now dedicate myself fully to training. Uh, my dogs are trained here by me, and they kind of understand and follow everything I tell them to do. But I don't have any type of professional training or even book read training. Uh, whereas Robert, on the other hand, um, Whenever I have a training issue or something going on with one of my dogs, guess guess who I'm turning to? I'm turning to this guy. I'm turning to this guy right here, uh, Robert James Ward and Kimi and K's Watchtower. Okay, so th this is how you want to build your brand. You want to be able, able to have people that you can reach to and get resources from in case you run into anything. Uh, if, if, if all of you were, were just breeders and, and people that date internet or YouTube like I do, then you run into a world of hurt whenever it was time to go ahead and train. So I just want to go ahead and run that. Rob, thanks a lot for uh, giving your input. Uh, let's see here. Can you breed Merle to a mostly white coat female? Man, Robert, I wish you would answer this. Uh, I'm going to tell you guys this. Melanin, uh, melanin, um, let me just say this. Whenever you have dogs that are fully white, okay, you're running a risk of them being deaf, okay? And it's got more to do with the, the developmental stage of their ears as well as what it is that they lack in pigmentation in order to make everything click. So would I breed a Merle to an all-white dog? I would not. We already know that the Merle pattern, when bred to itself, can produce blind and deaf dogs. We don't want to run the risk of producing that. So that would be my best recommendation for you, fam. Uh, Robert is saying, I'm not a trainer. Just learn what I love. Absolutely, man. And, you know, a lot of times I got people asking me, man, like, yo, dude, like you're always cranking out videos and you're putting out that this, that and the other. Fam, this is fun for me. This is what I'm passionate about. I, I could talk bully all day. 
I, if you if you came over to my house and there was a football game, and I love football, while the game is on, we're talking bully, and, and in the halftime show, we're talking bully, and when the game is over, we're talking bully. Uh, this is something that I could do for days. I wouldn't get tired in doing so, and I would recommend for you to have uh, as much passion if you're going to get into it, uh, because breeding is not easy, fam. Uh, once you get over the fact that you're going to have to pick up poop, uh, you know, morning and night, uh, then also you you got to realize that there's going to be females that are not going to take. There's going to be C-sections you're going to run, you know, going to have to run with your dog to the ER with. Uh, there's going to be sleepless nights when the pups drop, so on and so forth. So unless you truly love it, it could actually become a, a burden for you. Um, let's see what else Robert's saying. Double trouble, Myrtle White. Don't do it. Hey, I, I just said it. I just said it, and he's backing it up as well. Uh, don't don't go that route, fam. You're you're gonna run into a world of hurt. Now, look, I get asked this all the time, man. So let me go ahead and answer this right now. And I'm glad you brought it up, Jose Camarillo Reyes. Thank you for asking this question. Any books or resources you recommend to learn about genetics? Look, man. I'm going to tell you guys right now, this is what I do. I literally go to eBay. I find myself books written in, in the early 1990s or early 2000s, and I buy them for two or three or four bucks. And I go in there, and whatever it is that I'm looking for, I read it. If it's coat color, I go in there and I read that. If it's, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, some sort, some sort of pathology, uh, like the MRN1, I believe uh, it's um, – it's a resistant microorganism. I, I forget what it is right now. Anyways, uh, that's what I do, fam. This is why I don't necessarily pinpoint to one particular book. I just, I just, just buy two or three books, go into one chapter, read it, and I'm going to tell you this, fam. So you don't feel, uh, you don't feel like somebody rat rattled your cage. I read it, read that chapter. I'll turn around and read it again, and I could read it up to four or five times. Once I know it by heart, I felt that I've I've basically consumed this information and I can put it out knowing what it is that I'm talking about. And 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 actually, if I can put in work into what I'm doing, then at that point, I move on to something else, whether it's another chapter or another book. OK, but I'm going to tell you right now. If you haven't picked up a genetics book or a, or a biology book in a while and, and you're, you feel like you're just going to pick it up and you're going to just hit the floor running, you got something else uh, that's coming at you. I suggest you start uh, with biology 101, mitosis, meiosis, start learning what, what, what's going on and, and then, you know, kind of bring that together with genetics. Um, that's my best suggestion. Uh, I'm sick. I'm on a sick one, fam. I don't understand what he means. Um, can you breed? Okay. Uh, let's see here. Jamie Humphrey. Yeah, us wives do the dirty work in the whelping process for sure. Ha ha. Jamie. Oh, man. You, you're you about to get me in a world of hurt. I hope Miss Fagundes ain't hearing me here uh, right about now. Uh, I'm going to tell you what. Um, I could say that for whatever reason, when the puppies drop, uh, my wife's uh, maternal instincts get into overdrive. I don't care how many litters we've had, her maternal instincts kind of kick in. And, you know, the whole, uh, I don't know how to explain it, man. The whole, uh, you know, just maternal instinct, man, it, it's special. And, and you ladies definitely have it. And let me tell you something. I feel that it's the type of touch that the puppies truly, truly need. Uh, not to say that I don't care for them or that I don't take care of them. I certainly do. And I'm on top of them. But there's something about that maternal instinct. I don't know, man. You you, you guys definitely have it. And I definitely tip my hat off to you guys for that. Let me see what, what we got over here. Recently read some things about a couple aftermath offspring. Would you be com comfortable speaking on it? 862. All right, 862, let me tell you something, man. I already know where you're headed with this, and I'm going to tell you this. Uh, whether it's with aftermath or any other dog that has produced any puppy, you got to you got to look at the entire circumstance. You can't just point the finger and say, OK, it, it's completely temperamental um, because then I would have to ask you, are you a dog psychologist? Uh, are you an investigator? 
you know, what are all the arguments that you have in place that shows you that this is what's going on with this particular dog? Are you there at night when the owner has the puppy in the home? Do you know they're kicking it, beating it, doing something to it? Um, so I'm not going to get into that, uh, definitely. But, you know, um, I, I, all I'm going to say is that, unfortunately, in social media nowadays, if somebody wants to destroy you, and they and they're able to grab something that happened to you that could happen to any breeder out here, including me. Okay, and they could pretty much uh, shed it, or um, I'm sorry, place it in such a light where you know it makes you look like you're being irresponsible or whatnot. Now, I'm not covering. I'm also not taking the cover away. All I'm saying is you got to look at everything. I don't know it all, and therefore I'm not even going to get involved with this whole thing. So um, I, I understand you got no hate intended in your question, but I'm not I'm not necessarily going to get into that. So we got a one man show at this camp, single dad and job. OK, this is Robert James Ward, for example. Uh, he, you know, he's a single dad and he's got a job and, you know, he's just got he's got he's got a new puppy, uh, Lodi. Uh, if you haven't if you haven't checked her out. Make sure you uh, check them out on Facebook and check her out. Matter of fact, let me see if it allows me to go into Facebook now and see if I can show your uh, your page. Rob, uh, do you feel comfortable with me doing that, man? So you can just go ahead and answer me. I'll, I'll read your question. Uh, what do you do about a patchy tail? Also, some breeders will tell you if there's a problem, Raquan Moss. I don't know what you're referring to if there's a problem, but I'll address a couple of, of I'll try to answer that question the best I can. What to do about patchy tail? Just one spot on my one-year-old's tail. No itching or biting. Um, look, uh, a lot of times I've found that that's got more to do with diet than anything else. So changing up the, the diet, maybe a little barf diet wouldn't hurt. Uh, some raw diet, uh, you know, spraying uh, vinegar, you know, half a mix of half vinegar, half water, spraying that on there, you know, every single day, two, three, four times a day, you know, wouldn't be the worst thing. Only bad thing about it is when you spray it, since it's the tail, they're going to go ahead and lick it. So, um, Raquan, also some breeders will tell you if there's a problem. Okay, so let me address this the best that I can. Uh, an ethical breeder uh, will definitely know if you got some hot blood in your hand. If you have a pup that's hot blood or whatnot, and you don't want them placed, say, in a home where there's children, because you kind of feel that when you do the temperamental tests on your pup, uh, you know, he's, he's just... Uh, He's not as patient as you would want to be, want him to be if he's going into a home with a child, for example. Then at that point, you got to do your due diligence and either send him, sell him his pet quality or even, even come up. You know, I live out here in the boongies, so I could find myself a farm out here, talk with the owner, let them know what it is, put, you know, maybe place the pup there and and see how the pup develops and, and take it from there. Um, that's the ethical thing to do. Um, I hope that this is what you're asking about. Um, you know, also I could tell you if I have, if I feel I have hot blooded puppy, I would never let it go into a home where I see somebody that cannot handle it. You know, you have a 90 pound, 80 year old lady trying to buy, you know, a pup that's going to be over 140 pounds and you know, it's got some hot blood in it. You know, you might want to bypass that. So that's that's the best that uh, that's the best that I could do it. Robert's telling me to show it. So let me go ahead and uh, let me go ahead and see his. Uh, let's go to his page and let's show his new baby uh, so you guys could check it out. Uh, here we go. Share screen. Yeah, man. I, I want you guys to check, check out this little girl. Uh, there we go. Yeah. And so here's Robert and here's our boy Gemini. And I guess in the background, he's got uh, Aruba's sister. And that's that's Sammy, Sammy girl. And uh, here you go. There's Gemini and there's Sammy laying down. Uh, and those are the two mainstay pups. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Robert, uh, that I would say uh, that, that I would say you have in your yard. Um, let's see here. I'm not seeing any pictures of Lodi, man. Oh, there you go. You got me on the live. I appreciate it, brother. Uh, come on, man. Where you got her at? 
All right. I'm not seeing any loaded pictures. I see a lot of lives. I see you're sharing my stuff, man. And I really appreciate it, fam. But I'm not seeing Lodi anywhere, man. And I'm scrolling. Really wanted to show her. Let me let me go up to your pictures, man. Let me see if uh, maybe uh, maybe I zigged when I should have zagged. I don't know, man. Ah, my internet is now acting up. There you go. Photos. Let's see if you got her there. And I'm not seeing her right off the bat, man. Let's see. See all photos. Let me see. Come on, man. Show me one Lodi photo in here. And we can do something. I'm not seeing her, bro. All right. All right, man. If you want, go ahead and post it up and I'll come back to it, bro. All right. So definitely, let's see what else we got over here, man. Oh, Watchtower page. I'm sorry. That's what he's saying. And, and, and we have a female there that's leaving soon. So let's let's go to QBNK's uh, Watchtower page. There you go. So I'll go to StreamYard. Let me go ahead and uh, share this. And we got it right up. So you guys could check it out. There we go. There we go. Whoa, what you got here, man? I don't even want to know, bro. Uh, there you go. This, this is his new baby girl, Lodi, man. And let me tell you, she is super cute. And uh, another another very good power production, man, let me just tell you. Uh, it's real surprising. Uh, like I keep telling you guys, um, you know, with, with jeans, you have something on the outside because when you see power, you know, he's a blue male. Uh, yet he's been producing a lot of these fawn pups left and right. Uh, I would say a good 75% of his pups in total uh, have been fawn. Now, this last litter he had uh, with my female, uh, the next-gen litter, he definitely has produced more blues than fawns. But all in all, if I was to do the numbers, that's what we would have. Let me see uh, what else we got. It says here, I have an XL Lilac Tri Merle. What would you recommend locking into? Okay, so I take it, I take it, Dubois, Dubois L. I take it that you want to produce the lilac. Uh, man, if you can find yourself lilac, lilac is the best way to produce lilac, man. Um, the other thing you want to find in order to produce lilac would be, uh, I would say, a capital B and a lowercase b in the black brown relationship. Um, I, you know, if you haven't seen my video on color genetics, I suggest you go check it out. It's right here in this channel. Uh, you're going to see that you're going to need blue. So you need the black, the capital B, and you need a, a lowercase d for dilution. So what it does is kind of like pouring bleach on the black and it makes it blue. Uh, you're going to need that blue. And then on the chocolate side, you need the dilution as well so that uh, you can dilute both the red or the chocolate and the blue. And that's how you're going to get lilac. If you have double dilution or, or two lowercase d's, then definitely you have a good shot at reproducing that. Good question. Let's see what else we got. The boy that has a cinder block for a head. Okay. But cares leaving soon. Watchtower. Okay. Can you help me with a question, Raul, please? Uh, come on. Write the question, king of that blood kennel. Come on. Just write it on there. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, how do I get the QBN app on my computer? Fam, I don't know all that. All I know is you could either go to the App Store or you could go to the Google Play Store, uh, type in QBN space APP. You download it. It's absolutely free. And uh, you're able to see, uh, you know, everything that we're able to share. Uh, you get dibs on our pups pretty much. Um you know, you're, 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 you're going to be ahead of the curve if, you, if you're trying to get uh, with our pups, which, by the way, brings me up and I'm going to go ahead and put it on the ticker down here. Uh, it brings me up to a service that I provide personally, and that's the QBNK consultative services. So, look, if you, these questions that I'm answering, if you're looking to, say, put a male into your lilac female, your lilac tri female, and you're trying to produce lilacs, you're really not sure. Fam, before you pull the trigger and you spend two, three, four thousand dollars on that stud, you know, pretty much download QBN app. All you got to do is go down to where it says uh, PayPal deposit, click on that, uh, pay fifty dollars, take a screenshot, 
then go to the contact us button, post it there. As soon as I get, as soon as I get a chance that I'm open, I'm definitely going to jump on that, answer your questions. You get 30 minutes one on one with me. We're going to go back and forth. You're not going to have somebody else talking to you. You're going to have me exclusively talking to you. And we're going to go back and forth. And then regardless what your problem is, we're also going to go over nutrition. We're also going to go over just general care. And also I'm going to give you the best advice uh, for your kennel to grow. So don't forget uh, QB&K consultation. If you don't know what pup to get, you got third pick is between third and fourth. You know, before you do that, just spend the 50 bucks. It's really worth it. I'm going to give you 30 minutes of my time. I'm going to make it worth it for you. All right. So we got uh, Rick Stahl-Roscaro again. When talking about genetics, does the female throw down more of her side family traits or does the male carry more stronger genes from his side or is it 50-50? Okay, so I'm going to give you the textbook answer and I'm going to tell you what I think, all right? So the textbook answer is it's 50-50. Now I'm going to tell you what I think. I think the female gives more. And the reason that I think that the female gives more, and now remember I told you guys, if you haven't done biology or whatever, I need you to look it up. But I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you some information. All right. So the sperm, that little wiggly thing that's got a tail that's gonna try to inseminate the egg, does not have mitochondria. The mitochondria is only in the ovum. Okay. So I feel that that plays a big part because the mitochondria affects the metabolism of the pups. And so if you're trying to have big, hefty pups, but your female has a metabolism uh, of, uh, of, um, of, of high catabolism, meaning she's always going to be skinny regardless what you feed her, then I feel that she's actually contributing more to that litter as far as what their body type is going to be than the actual male. Uh, I could tell you back in the days when I first started, uh, Luis Cabrera, who I've I've referenced quite a bit as being uh, my main mentor, he told me, "Look, man, general terms is not always going to happen that way. But general terms, when you when you breed a male to a female, you're going to get the female's body with a male's head." And I will dare to say that more times than not, in fact, I'll say sixty percent of the times, eh, that's pretty much that's pretty much it. So I hope that that kind of Answers your question the, uh, the the best way that I can, man. Uh, let me see. All right, so eight six two. Should I be limiting? Should I be limiting the about a, the amount of rough play with my sixteen week old pup, an adult male, until she's a little older and her joints are better developed? Absolutely, bro. Matter of fact, also jumping. Uh, if you're gonna do, if you're gonna have your pups out on the spring pole, make sure their feet are on the ground. And make sure it's not too high, so when they come down, it doesn't give them that shock and that impact. Uh, you know, one jump is not gonna make a, a big difference, but jumping four or five times a day over a long period of time is actually gonna affect, um, you know, these bones and these joints as they're developing. So definitely, I would stay away from that. I was, I would also stay away from walking my dogs more than, than a block. In fact, I would try to stick to short spurts. So if you need to exercise your pup, I would much rather you uh, have them sprint or yeah, just have them sprint in a straight line on grass than necessarily taking them on a, on a three mile, uh, you know, uh, hike or, or not hike, but a three mile walk on a flat surface. Uh, that's just my recommendation. Um, it's better for the joints and for everything else. Let me see what else we got. Um, bah, bah. What do you think about, uh, listen, fam, I'm going to tell you guys this right now. I don't talk about kennels. So do not write on here. What do I think about XYZ kennels? You know, it's up to you. You know, I give you the information. I tell you what East West is. I tell you what high rear is. I, I tell you these things. I show you in my videos. If you don't want to put the time and you want to compare, you know, don't come out here asking me. Don't ask me for recommendations. I don't re recommend any other kennel but QBN kennels. That's just the way that I roll. Okay. I stay in my lane and I play golf. If you guys want to bring any 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 type of animosity or drama or whatever, this is this is just not the place to bring it. That's not necessarily how we're gonna roll, fam. And and not saying that you wanted to do that, Carmela, but please don't do that. Don't ask me uh, on a particular name of a kennel. 
I, I feel that it would be uh, unethical of me for me to sit here and say that uh, as I could be gaining an advantage uh, by talking down on the kennel when they're probably sleeping somewhere right about now. I would never do that. So let's see here. Uh, in your opinion, let me see. Uh, in your opinion, if you have a blue tri female, what color me would you put her to everything else aside? I don't understand the question. I'm sorry, fam. Uh, Robert, does exotics have underbites? Uh, Robert, you could go ahead and hit that on the comments section. All right, fam. So listen, uh, we've been on here for an hour and 20. I promised myself I would only be here for about an hour. Uh, either way, uh, I just want to tell you guys, I really, uh, I got a new comment. So let, let me just answer this. What's up, QBNK? Jose Bean. What's up, Jose Bean in the house? Uh, let me just say, Jose Bean, you kind of showed up, man, at the, at the time that I'm going to be uh, booging on out of here. Uh, I want to thank you guys for joining me. Uh, I'm playing a little bit around with the time because, as you well know, I'm in the middle of nowhere. Um, Verizon cannot put another tower because it's not worth it to them. Uh, there's not enough people that are going to be on it. And then everybody else and their sister are, are on the one tower that we have here nearby. So with that being said, I might have to make these lives either later later at, uh, at night or or have to adjust. I tried doing it earlier today to see how, how it went. It didn't go too, too well. Um, so if you see me kind of moving around the times and whatnot, please uh, don't don't uh, hold me up too much for it. Also, if you like our content, fam, I know I said it earlier, and, you know, I'm going to go ahead and say it again. Uh, if you feel that we're giving some good content, make sure that you hit the you hit the subscribe button over here. You hit the shares. You get us out there, fam. Um, more than anything, so we can start educating people and we can start raising the level of our breed. Uh, I want to tell uh, Robert from James Ward from QBNK Watchtower, fam. I appreciate you for showing up, and for everybody else uh, that's been out here. It's been Raul from the queue. Been Raul from the queue, and I'm trying to queue my.